Hi, I'm Teacher Randy. Welcome to another tech vlog for Practical Research 2. For today's topic, we're going to learn the different kinds of variables used in quantitative research. For this topic, here's the most essential learning competency that you need to master. Patinin ninyo yung mga words na nandyan sa itaas. Familiar ka ba sa mga ito? Kung halos lahat familiar ka, well, palakpakan naman dyan. Mahusay. Pero kung hindi, well, ito ang ating topic sa tech vlog na ito. One of the aspects of research is to describe and explain variables. That's why it is called the central concept of conducting research. But, do you know what is a variable? A variable is a measurable characteristic that changes in the volume. It is anything that may assume varied numerical or categorical values. For instance, gender is a variable. It may be a male or a female, but it won't be applicable as a variable if the setting of the research is an exclusive school for girls. A variable can be classified as continuous or discrete variable. A continuous variable is any variable that can take infinite number on the value that can occur within a population. The values can be divided into fractions, for example, age, height, and temperature. While discrete variable is also known as the categorical or classificatory variable, it is any variable that has a limited number of distinct values in which cannot be divided into fractions. For example, we have sex, blood group, and number of children in the family. Para mas madaling intindihin kung ano nga bang pinagkabi nitong dalawang ito, laging tandaan na kapag continuous variable, ito ay pwedeng i-divide sa mga maliliit na bilang, pwedeng into fractions or decimals. Halimbawa, yung temperature. Kung papansin yung minsan, may mga value ang temperature na 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, okay. Continuous verbal can be further classified into two types. We have interval verbal, where it is a verbal that is a measurement where the difference between two values does have meaning. Example, we have temperature. On the other hand, Ratio variable possesses the properties of interval variable and has a clear definition of zero, indication that there is none of that variable. For example, we have height, weight, and distance. Para mas madaling intindihin kung anong pinagkaiba nitong dalawang ito, laging tandaan na kapag sa interval variable at sa ratio variable, parehas nilang kinoconsider ang interval ng bawat isa. Pero sa interval variable, hindi nito kinoconsider ang value na zero. Pero sa ratio variable, ang zero ay my meaning. Discrete variables can also be further classified into two types. We have nominal variable. It is any variable with no quantitative value. It has two or more categories but does not imply ordering of cases like eye color, business type, and religion. While Ordinal variable is any variable that has two or more categories which can be ranked. For example, we have level of performance, level of satisfaction, educational attainment, and etc. Para madaling intindihin naman kung anong pinagkaiba nitong dalawang ito, basta pag sinabi mong nominal variable, ang order ay hindi mahalaga. Pero kapag sa ordinal variable, kailangan nakaayos ang mga variable mo na pwedeng into highest to lowest or lowest to highest. Laging nakarank ang mga variables mo dito. A variable can be also be classified as independent or dependent variable. Independent variable is the cause variable or the one responsible for the conditions that act on something else to bring out changes, while dependent variable is called the outcome variable where it is the result or effect of the changes brought by another variable. Ibig sabihin, ang nagkakos ng change ay ang independent variable at ang effect naman nito, ito ang tinatawag nilang dependent variable. 
Let's try solving these examples. This is our test. Figure out the independent, independent variables in the following situation. First situation. A soap manufacturer wants to prove that their detergent powder works better to remove top stains. Our first step here is to list all the variables that we can observe on the situation. So we have 1. Brands of detergent powder. Next is visibility of the stain. So in this example, our independent variable is the brand of detergent powder. And the changes that affects with the brand is the visibility of the stain. That's why it is the dependent variable. Another situation. You want to study the health benefits of walking. So we have our variables, occurrence of diseases, and how often you walk a week. So our independent variable is how often you walk a week. And the dependent variable is the occurrence of diseases because the number of times you walk affects the occurrence of diseases in your body. That's why it is the dependent variable. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoy learning with you. I am Teacher Randy, happy to serve.